we break through the space-time continuum on this VFX Breakdown. Welcome to VFX Breakdown, the show where we show you how to recreate your favorite visual effects from TV and film. Imagine it's the late 1960s and a superhuman genius named Stanley Kubrick approaches you with that famously menacing gaze and asks you to use an old photography technique called slit scan to engineer one of the most famous sci-fi shots in cinema history for the groundbreaking masterpiece film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Well, luckily for us, it's now the year 2022, and we have things like GPUs and free software that'll render us some pretty wild effects in record time. I'm sorry, Stanley. Please don't hurt me. No, but in all seriousness, we truly, truly appreciate and admire all of the insanely hard work, ingenuity, and labor of love that these masters put into their craft. But we're as equally as appreciative of how far our technology has come. Although I can only imagine that they wish that they had the tech that we take for granted nowadays back then. What do you think? Do you think that Stanley and the crew would have embraced the technology of today? Or would it have kind of taken away from the artist's hand that made this film so incredibly stunning? Let us know in the comments below. Now with all that being said, in this video, we're gonna show you how we came up with our own version of this effect using a free but very powerful open source software called Blender. And that starts right about now. Now in order to shoot the scene where Dave Bowman goes through the Stargate, I actually had to shoot myself with two separate RGB lights while wearing this fake space helmet that we bought from the Halloween store. Okay, now that we're in Blender, we're gonna start off by deleting the default cube and light. Next, we're gonna go over to our render properties. And for render engine, since we're not looking for any kind of photorealism in this project, we're gonna choose Eevee, Blender's real-time render engine. Then we're gonna go down and we're gonna check Bloom, Motion Blur. Then down in Color Management, I'm gonna leave everything set to default except for Look. I'm gonna change mine to very low contrast. If you're following along, you can leave yours set to None or choose another look that you prefer. I'm gonna stick with very low contrast and adjust the colors later on in my color grading. Next, we're gonna to go to Output Properties. You can leave yours set to 1920 by 1080 if you prefer. I'm gonna go with 4096 by 1716 for a 239 aspect ratio. And then down under Output, we're gonna set our Output File Path. I already have mine set in here. And then for File Format, there's multiple formats that you can choose. You can choose to do a video or an image sequence. I like to render things out in a PNG sequence. And for this project, we're not gonna be using an alpha channel, so we'll set it to RGB, color depth to 16, and bring the compression down to 0%. And then next we'll hop over to World Properties, and we're gonna set the color of the world to black. Okay, now we're gonna set up our camera. I'm gonna click on the camera, I'm gonna hit Alt-G to reset its location, and then I'm gonna hit Alt-R to reset its rotation. And then I'm gonna hit R, X, and 90 to set it to a 90 degree angle along the X axis. Then I'm gonna come over to the Camera Properties tab, and I'm gonna change the focal length to 24 millimeters to give it a little bit wider look. And then for clip start and clip end, I'm gonna change end to a relatively large number like 10,000 meters because we're gonna be looking pretty far in the distance in this scene. And then I'm gonna come down to viewport display and right here I'm gonna change this over to one. That way we don't have anything that's outside of the camera frame distracting us. All right, now we're gonna create a plane. We're gonna hit Shift plus A, and we're gonna to go to Mesh, Plane, and then with that plane selected, we're gonna hit R, Y, 90, to rotate it 90 degrees along the Y axis. And then we're gonna hit S for Scale, and Y to scale it along the Y axis. And then we'll do S for Scale again, and Z, and scale it along the Z axis. All right, now we're gonna do something a little crazy. We're gonna scale these along the y-axis extremely long because eventually we're gonna animate the camera to be tracking down between these two planes. 
Now we're gonna move these planes by hitting G. Now we're gonna move the plane over one unit by hitting G and the number one. And then with our plane still selected, we're gonna hit Shift plus D plus G for move and then negative two to move the duplicated plane over to the other side. And now to switch over to camera view, we're gonna hit zero on our number pad. Then we're gonna select both planes and we're going to hit S for scale, Z for the Z axis, and we're just gonna scale these planes up. Now in this part, we're gonna create the materials to build out the look for our Stargate. And since we're dealing with a bit more abstract type of visuals, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. It's all pretty subjective and experimental. And I try not to get caught up in the technicals or the numerical values of all the different parameters on the nodes. I like to just try things out, pop different texture nodes in there, math nodes, what have you, and see what works. Try to have fun, don't overthink it, and let's get going. So first we're gonna click on one of our planes and we're gonna hit new material. And on our principal BSDF shader, we're gonna take down a few parameters that we really don't need on. We're gonna bring the roughness down to zero. Then we're gonna come down to emission color and strength. We're gonna choose our emission color and then we're gonna bring the strength up just a bit to start with. And with our principal shader still selected, we're gonna hit control T on the keyboard for node wrangler. And if you're following along and this doesn't work, you're gonna to have to go up to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for node wrangler. And then you're gonna to have to activate that and then save preferences, and then it should work. Now that we have Node Wrangler enabled, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on Image Texture. We're not actually gonna be using an Image Texture in this effect. So with Image Texture selected, we're gonna hit Shift S to switch the node. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna find Color Ramp. And now that we have our Color Ramp, we're gonna move the noodle from Base Color down to Alpha. And now we're just gonna play around with adding some different texture nodes and see what we get. So to add our first texture, we're gonna hit Shift plus A, then we're gonna go down to Texture, and let's try adding a Musgrave texture to start with. And now this is really where the experimentation kicks in. You can add multiple different texture nodes, you can add math nodes, you can go over to the mapping, and you can mess around with the parameters there to kind of mold a look that you think is cool. Again, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. This is purely, purely experimental. And if you need to adjust between the black points and the white points of whatever pattern you're working with, that's when you'll go back to the color ramp and adjust the black slider until you find something that you like. Now we can combine different textures into one material if we want. If we want to have one aspect be a little more organic, and we want another texture to be a little more geometric, we can just select all of these, hit Shift D to duplicate, move those down, and then we can do Shift A S for search, and search for a mix shader node, plop that node in there, connect both of our principles to the mix shader, and then we can go down to the duplicated one and we can start changing nodes out. Maybe for this one, we wanna use a brick texture node to give a little more square geometric patterns. Now that we've messed around a bit and got a base for what we like, it's time to do a little bit of animation. We're gonna pull up our timeline, and then we're gonna select the camera. We're gonna hit I and select location to add a keyframe. And then we're gonna go over to the end of our timeline. And with our camera still selected, we're gonna hit G for move and Y to move it along the Y axis. And then we're gonna hit I on our keyboard again, select location to add a keyframe. And then we're gonna go back to the beginning of our timeline. And with all of our keyframes selected, we're gonna hit T and choose linear. And we're gonna hit play to test out the speed of our animation. Now you can animate almost any parameter inside of Blender. If we go to one of our shaders, say we wanna change the emission color over time. 
Well, we can go to our principal BSDF shader. We can go down to emission color. And then with our mouse hovered over the color box, we hit I to set a keyframe. And then we scroll down our timeline a little bit. Choose another color. Hit I to set another keyframe. Go further down the timeline. Select another color. Hit I and repeat the process. And again, this can be done with any of the nodes in our material, so you can get pretty wild with things changing over time. Now, one last thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a vertical white light at the end of our Stargate. So to do that, I'm gonna hit Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and with our plane selected, I'm gonna hit R for rotate, X, and 90 to rotate at 90 degrees along the X axis. And then I'm gonna hit G for move, Y, and then I'm gonna move it all the way to the end of the other planes. Then I'm gonna hit S for scale, Z, and then we're gonna scale it all the way until it's outside of the camera frame. And then I'm gonna hit S again, X, to scale it inward. And then with our plane still selected, we'll go back into our shader editor, we'll add a new material, We'll delete the default principled BSDF shader. We'll hit Shift A S for search. We'll type in emission. We'll hook up our emission shader, and then we'll bring the emission level up quite a bit. Now that we've gone back and done a little bit more tweaking and we have something we're happy with, it's time to hit render. And then once that's done, it's time for post-processing. And now I've imported my image sequence into my editing suite, in this case, DaVinci Resolve. But you can do this in other programs such as After Effects or Premiere Pro. I'm going to try out some different color grading effects, add some prism blur, add some film grain, anything to really spice this up and give it that finished look. And then I'll add in our footage of AJ Bowman and we'll be ready to render our final video. If you like this video, go ahead and leave it a like and subscribe so that way we can reach new VFX fans in the future. Now without further ado, here is the 2001 Space Odyssey Stargate effect.